Hi. Today we're taking a look at Imagination Augmented Agents for Deep Reinforcement Learning. Uh, this is a paper by DeepMind and has been in the news a bit recently. So we're going to have a look at what it's all about. Basically, they claim that um, agents who have a model of the world perform better usually than agents who don't. But, of course, usually we don't have a model of the world. So they make the agent learn a model of the world, which you can then use to plan. Now, this learning of the model can, of course, be um, imperfect because it's learned. And so they provide a way to work with imperfect environment models and combine them with a model-free approach. So what do we mean by uh, models and model-free? Basically, what you can say is if you have a model of the world, um, you have kind of a, a machine, say a box, and in this box you can you have a state S and you feed the state to the machine and you feed an action and the model of the world will tell you what did uh, S prime, the new state's going to be. Um, so this is in the case where you exactly know how your environment works. Now, in a model-free approach, what you would do is you would uh, you would plan basically. You would have a state, and you would put that through some kind of a layered neural network, and out would come what action should I take right now. So. In the model-based approach, you're trying to uh, try out all these actions and tell you, look, which one gives me kind of a desired final state. And in the model-free approach, you simply use the rewards to go directly, say, here's my state, what should my action be? Um, so this paper is a combination of both. The basic architecture is here, so let's start from the from the very right. We have two paths uh, divided along this line. The final policy, so which actions you're going to take and uh, what kind of values you can expect, is going to be a result of two different models that are combined. Um, there's a model-free path, which means this is what we talked about. Simply here is the state and you simply feed it through this neural network thing, blah, 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 blah. out comes a policy or an action you should take. Um, but then there's also this other path, and this is the this imagination path. Uh, basically consists a bunch of these rollout encoders. And these rollout encoders is just the agent imagining the future. So the agent doing some actions and looking at how they will perform. So as this done, there's this um, imagination core thingy. Uh, what this consists of is a policy network and an environment model. So, And this environment model is really the core of the entire thing. So this environment model you basically learn from what you've seen so far. So, so far you've taken certain actions here in certain states. You use this to um, to learn the environment model that gives you from one state the next state and the next reward. So that's that's um, what you learn, of course also using neural networks and whatnot. And um, you use that environment model to, um, to imagine the future. So here in this imagination core, basically you put in your state, you get out uh, some new state and some reward, you feed the new state and you imagine another action. Of course the actions aren't random, the actions you also uh, take via this thing. And this is where it loops all back. This is now a model-free policy network that works with the environment model. So basically in your imagination you only use, if you look at the very right here, you only use this right path. Um, because your imagination doesn't need to be like super exact or super well planned, you can use 
the model free approach that we kind of know kind of works for some problems you use this to generate your actions that you imagine and you use an environment model in order to look how these actions will play out and that's how you imagine one step of the future and you simply repeat this um, a couple of steps and then you have an entire what's called a rollout which consists of these pairs of states and rewards and what you do then is you encode this rollout via this encoder which is in this case an LSTM or something like this I think um, you, you encode all these states into one vector into one embedding basically for this rollout and this embedding describes kind of this future imagined path of course what you're gonna hope is that uh, some how this encoding captures how you will do in the future and how good this will be so these states and rewards uh, once you have a couple of these rollouts so once you've imagined a couple of different futures um, you then aggregate them in this aggregator I think in their case they just concatenate the, the these rollout encodings and then you feed this too to the to the big to the big aggregator on top so the big aggregator on top can now uh, combine the model free path and the imagined futures so if the big aggregator thinks that the imagination isn't correct it can resort to the model free path but it can also think that maybe it's correct or it can be kind of if it's sure it's correct it can fully trust these rollouts and perform actions according to that all of this is of course trained end to end there's a there's a tiny piece we haven't looked at yet namely how this here this policy network on the left is learned um, and this is simply learned by and I have to pay attention that I'm doing the right thing here so you take this big thing here your final policy network and you you perform you kind of learn to copy its actions simply from the input so from this model free input over here you take this input and you take the, excuse me and you take the the output of your big poli of your big policy network and you try to simply make a neural network that copies the outputs given these inputs and that's kind of your small policy network in here that's simply model free so um this the, the loop closes in a, in a way that you use your you use your your learned model to then again imagine the future but of course for imagining the future within imagining the future you can't have another instance of this network because it would be infinite recursion so you can only have a model free network um all right that's it for the model of course um yeah there's a couple of tricks and how to encode these things basically they perform experiments and this is maybe what you've seen in the media so far of this uh, game and this game is a game where you have to push around the brown boxes onto the red squares using the green uh, uh, avatar that you have so this game is difficult because first of all the levels are generated randomly um, so there's no way you can like uh, hard code anything and second of all if you push a box say this box here if you were to push it to the right into the corner you would have no way of getting it out again That's why I have to plan ahead and uh, avoid such mistakes because yeah, it's they're not fixable. So once you make the mistakes, you can't go back, and and that's where planning comes in. 
so handy. If you imagine this future and if your model is correct or approximately correct, then you can avoid such mistakes. Of course, that's yeah the difficulty in this game and that's where the planning helps. Um, note that they don't they don't code in how the game works so all these models get is pixel input of the game and they have to kind of imagine the pixel output they're gonna get uh, so that's um, increased difficulty so technically the the method is model free in the sense that yeah, there's really no coded model of the world uh, just the pixels so they um, have performance uh, comparisons in where if you and I find this on the right here interesting you can see according to the unruled depth so uh, how how much steps into the future you imagine and you can see it kind of flattens out after only about five steps um, whereas the game usually lasts for about 50 steps they say so only imagining five steps is already really helpful um, what i don't like here is that they compare to what they say this uh, copy model because this is here is a standard model free comparison so it's just a model free agent and of course it or not of course but it performs worse um right here and it um because it has no imagination but it also has less parameters so they're trying to compare it to something with the same amount of parameters and say oh we have this copy model agent here and what the copy model agent is doing is simply it's um for the environment model it's the same architecture but for the environment model it simply predicts the output as the input so it simply uh, says, oh, you do this action, the environment's going to be exactly the same as it is now. And I, I don't like it because basically this, this entire branch here becomes rather useless. And um, so even though you have parameters in here, uh, they're not useful. So to say that this is a comparison with the model of the same amount of parameters I don't know, technically true, yeah. Um, another thing that um, they do is they pre-train the environment model uh, from with a model-free agent. So first they code a model-free agent, uh, then they pre-train the environment model to then use it, uh, with this agent. So it's not fully learned end-to-end. -end. I can imagine they tried and it didn't work, and this is how you get it to work. So they, um, they also experiment with imperfect models. And um, so they train the environment model only imperfectly. And as you can see here, this is kind of the output you can get. So you have duplicates, you have kind of errors. You have twice your, twice your, your character here. You have like boxes within the wall or... Uh, all kinds of things and they basically show that if you try to classically plan using these models these bad models you uh you get nowhere basically this is a monte carlo um sampler planner using a poor model and it performance degrades significantly from when you use the good model which is right here and the uh imagination agent is not affected by kind of the bad model except that it takes kind of longer to reach its to reach its uh, its height in accuracy all right so there's a couple of other experiments and um, a couple of pac-man experiments where they show you can learn one model uh, to transfer kind of to play different games in this Pac-Man world and that just works the more if you have very sparse rewards which you can imagine yes um, if you need to plan then 
that's what you you get you get the ability to earn more sparse rewards because you can kind of look ahead all right so i think i'll conclude here with the discussion of this paper i quite liked it and um, it's, a, it's a cool method it combines many things and i uh, see you next time